Mel Mars. Yep. Go ahead. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. What up, guys? It's analyst Elikazams, aka Ben, former coach of the Alabama Elikazams, and I'm here with the New York Melomars for the post-draft discussion of the Scar Stargazer division. Uh, say hello. What's up, guys? We're here. We're gonna rank these teams. Yep. So uh, this is uh, mainly taking into account uh, the drafts in general. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to start off with uh, number 14. We've got the Clombrook Kyogres. So uh, you see the way these are formats. I have the teams, I have their terratypes, and then I have what I think are some of the strengths and weaknesses of this team. So I think uh, Clombrook came in late for the draft, and it resulted in a very awkward uh, team composition. It has a lot of strong Pokemon, like uh, King Gambit and Raging Bolt. A lot of late-game cleaners who can kind of come in at the end when things are chipped and uh, clean things up. I think this team uh, will struggle in the early game though. Uh, it doesn't really have uh, a great support system around it. The walls, I think Tentacruel in particular, is like really trying to hold this team together. It's the rapid spinner, you know, the hazard control. It's a, a very, uh, it's a flip turner. It's like coming in on everything and it has no recovery. There's a lot of Pokemon here that I think should be Terra Captains that aren't, you know, Electros, Rotom Frost, Lilligant. So, yeah. you know, it, you've got like uh, some overlapping roles in my opinion. You've got three electric types and granted like two of them are levitate. So at least you don't have a ground weakness, but it, I just feel like a lot of the Pokemon kind of do the same thing and you're left with very few defensive pieces. Uh, you, you've got Swamper and Tentacruel, which is nice. They don't actually share a weakness. But uh, I do think the Terra Captains on this team are pretty strong. Uh, what do you like? Uh, El Creamy uh, last season, Abbotsford showed that it can be really, really good. I think those are the right types probably. And I think Articuno Galar can be really, really nice as like a setup sweeper. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have any support for it, in my opinion. Yeah, um, Galar can definitely do things. Uh, a lot of the guys on this team I like. Like I think Mianxia was really good. I think Bolt is too low in points. Actually, it's pretty crazy. Swampert is constantly under. We actually have this at a good point total in document. Usually it's lower, but Swampert still has incredible bulk and the typing is great and it sets hazards as a flip turn now. Lilligant not being Terra really hurts it because I think it's pretty good. If it could Terra fire, it's not bad at all. Um, Gambit's not obviously not as good with that Terra, but it still can Gambit. He doesn't have any speed on this team at all. Like, yeah, this at is all. very slow. 110 highest speed, can't be Scarf. It's, it's Ogrepan Heart Thunder. Uh, Ogrepan Heart Flame, also, I mean, obviously you can't tear it, can't tear it in any league, but it's hurt a lot by not being able to tear it. It probably becomes like the second best Ogrepan without Terra, in my opinion. I think uh, Wellspring is probably better. Uh, yeah. It, it uh, kind of suffers uh, a little bit. And um, I think this team, uh, it's not it's not ground weak necessarily, but like, cause like there's a lot of immunities. Like I said, there's uh, two levitates, there's a flying, but the most important mons, the mons that are coming every week, King Gambit, Raging Bolt, Tentacruel, all three are weak to ground, right? So yeah. I think that's dangerous. I think if you want to Terra steal your El Creamy or your Articuno, then all of a sudden you're looking at like four ground weeks potentially in a week. So obviously you're probably always going to have like one of those levitators, which is nice, but I, I think you could run into a, like a sneaky ground weakness here. Yeah, for sure, because he's not going to have Electros and Rotom Frost in the same... I mean, I guess he could, but why? Um, so yeah, something gets set up that just has Earthquake coverage, like Earthquake and, what, like, Ice coverage? Something of that nature, just going to be really tough for this team to handle. And then Alcremie is the only fairy, and it almost always is going to tear it, because it's going to set up. It's going to tear a poison most of the time. So... Um, yeah, my man came late. That's the explanation. He's got some good guys, though. Like, uh, Raging Bolt will win some games, and Gambit should win some games. Yeah, um, it's but... kind of similar to uh, Sin City last season, who had, like, Kiram Greninja. A lot of really strong, like, nice guys. They just don't fit. You know what I mean? They yeah. don't really fit in a really cohesive way, in my opinion. Yeah, there's no strategy here that I can see. All right. Now we're going to move on to the Philadelphia Flygons. It really hurt me to put this team this low. Uh, we kind of have talked about it. I love the triple regenerator core. 
and then into gouging fire i think that's really cool uh there's just some problems with like this team has a massive issue with ground types in my opinion like a massive problematic issue the only immunity is halucha who's uh you know it can be defensive i think halucha is gonna have to be in a defensive role because it's the secondary like hazard removal on this team behind cyclozar who's terra so might want to take like a more offensive role so i think halucha is kind of pigeonholed into a more defensive role which is unfortunate for that pokemon in my opinion uh this team doesn't have like super great hazards in general the, the rockers are nose pass knackle stack who you know do you really want to bring both of those every week and then uh sandy shocks sandy shocks is a good rocker and a good spiker but that's really the only option so what this team really has going for it uh triple regen core really good uh decent speed tiers i think this team you know cyclozar into sneasel into like sandy shocks that's not terrible in my opinion scarf gardevoir uh it has really like physical breaking gouging fire and scissor are like a really good duo for that kind of thing and it's got a pretty good you know fairy uh, dragon steel uh if you like look at the, those three mons i i think uh cyclosar terra can be good but uh I, I don't really get the nose pass i don't get why it's here and um it kind of leaves me thinking this team's like one step away from being good from being like really great yeah when i look at it there's just something missing like i i feel like if the cyclists are, I don't think it needs the Terra because it wants to be utility on this team. And I don't know what else you would do because I, I like all the guys. I think maybe you could turn Nose Pass and Sneasel into something else that can Terra that's 80. Is this 11 guys? So maybe you turn Nose Pass and Sneasel into something else. I don't know what it would be without looking at it. But I like a lot of these guys. And I also think uh, this, similar to the team we just saw, I feel like Slowking is really holding this team together. That's what I wrote in my write-up. The, the, why it's better than Tentacruel is obviously because it has regenerated. So it can stay around the whole game. But I yeah. feel like you'll see when this team plays games that if Slowking dies randomly to something unexpected in the first 10 turns, this team can't handle it. Um, and Gouging Fire is not a Spectrier type in that it can be brain dead. I think it's going to take uh, Philadelphia a couple weeks to figure out what to do with a Moongus, Slowking, Scizor, Gouging Fire, Sandy Shocks. But when he figures out how to put that together, there's potential for this. This one could to, could end up being higher, in my opinion. Because I yeah, think there's I, a lot of potential with this somewhere, because it's going to be annoying to play against. Yeah, especially if, like, the Nose Pass and Sneasel get dropped, like you said. I think this team could be, like, really good. Because I think, like, Gardevoir can be good in draft. I've seen it. It, it can have a role yes, for sure. Sharper. Or uh, it can even be like a Will-O-Wisp set. I think I think all these pieces can like theoretically work. Stack is probably the, one of the best 40-point Pokemon we have. I think it's very underrated. I think yeah. not having Terra Fairy on Stack. I mean, I guess the other two are Terra Fairy, so he didn't want to have all three Terra Fairy. I think maybe yeah. Nosepass, like, if he does drop Nosepass at some point, maybe Nosepass has the Terra's Stack should have. And you could just yeah. switch that. But, um, you know, it, it, it's like... The three regenerator mons are really like the really cool part of this team, the kind of the identity in my opinion. And everything else around it isn't necessarily even built for that. Cause like, like when you have three regen mons and you're switching a bunch with them, you ideally want to have them switching, which would ideally mean they have hazards up, right? And this team doesn't really have super great hazards. No, but uh, unless you're gonna do suicide lead shocks, which yeah, is kind of I, a waste of this thing, because it, it is good as an offensive Pokemon. Yeah, I mean I do like like suicide lead spice shocks but and i think uh he should bring it a few times if i'm being honest but i still think uh, it's kind of missing like a dedicated hazard pokemon because you don't always want shocks to be that I, I um i would be not shocked if this team ended up uh higher though for sure I, yeah I this is a come on late team to me this is a come on late team to me after three weeks he might be zero and three and then he finishes yeah. like four and one in the last five games yeah because the team also has like a few common weaknesses like i said ground i think it's the immediate ground. and obvious yeah. one and the then i think he has sure. uh, secretly like an ice and a fairy issue uh a lot of our teams in the league do yeah, yeah a lot I, of them I, think, do. I think he has like secretly an ice and a fairy issue if he's not careful i think uh you know amoongus is a pretty good fairy check but you know fairy if a fairy type with like any coverage like any fire coverage i think could be very devastating for this team yeah and most of them have psychic coverage as well so. yeah all right so with that we'll move on to the 12th place team all right this is an interesting one 
the Pittsburgh Scissors coming in at 12. I think this team is interesting. It's kind of it's kind of hard to put into words how I feel about it. Um, Petron is here. I literally have on my slide one of my uh, bullet points is just Petron. I think Petron is actually like so key to this team. So this team, uh, the Flyguns before, I think they're like defensively they're pretty good, and then offensively maybe they're lacking slightly. I think the Pittsburgh team is like the opposite. This team is all firepower, very little defensive backbone. Their defensive pieces are like Rotom Heat, who uh, Rotom Heat, Yuxi, you know, Duraludon, Comfey can be a defensive piece, but all these pieces aren't like true walls in my opinion and a lot of them like their recovery is either pain split or they don't have recovery which means i think they can get broken through kind of they can kind of become in, in an awkward position and get broken through rather easily so who's here to save that petron petron has you know it has momentum it can part and shot it has recover so it can be a really great defensive wall i'm worried against like really strong special attackers for this team your your ground type is doug trio uh which isn't that's great. really bad it's, that's which really bad which, which isn't great i think electric types could be very devastating for this team your only spinner is blastoise so having blastoise is your spinner and then a ground type that's dug trio that can be pretty uh terrible i really like you know dark dark right ogre pond wellspring i do think wellspring's the best of the ogre ponds i think those two are like really threatening that that can be like pose a, a challenge for oppo opposing teams I think uh, Flamigo is a really good Terra Captain. The other two Terra Captains, I don't think they're bad. I don't think they're, like, fantastic or anything. Duraludon, I think, as both your steel, like, your only steel and your only dragon. That's asking a lot from Duraludon, in my opinion. And I also think, like, steel dragon as a typing, it's nice. But it makes it, if it's your only steel, it makes it so your steel doesn't resist fairy. Your steel doesn't resist ice. Which, uh, I, it, which can be kind of problematic for a team, in my opinion. Yeah, that's the as somebody who has another steel dragon type, that's the thing. And in re, in ladder play, steel dragon type is a great type. But if you're getting steel dragon type on a draft team, it doesn't function as a dragon or as a steel type. You need to carry something else out. Um, I think I had this team a little bit higher because I really like I like really like Petron also, and I like the pairing with Darkrai. I think Petron is actually crazy. Like unless they have a couple of very specific Pokemon. It's not as good, but it's similar in a vein of Slow King Galar in that unless there are very specific Pokemon on the other team, this dude shuts down physical. Like, this dude shuts down Gadget Fire. They can switch in on it. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff you think could beat this, it can't. Because it toxics you, you get confused. It can break your substitute. You think, oh, I'll throw Skarmy out and wall it. No, I nasty plot on you and just Shadow Ball you. Like, it, it really is really, really good, and it covers Dark Ride essentially perfectly. Um, I had my eye on Flamigo as a Terra Captain. I think it's really good. It got banned in the lower tiers a lot when it could Terra because flying fighting coverage is crazy. You throw a scarf on this thing and then it gets the choice ban because of the Terra. It's quite good. Um, I like Blastoise as a spinner. I like AV defensive Blastoise. I think it sits there forever. I wish there was wish support for it. My concern with this team, like you said, is that if it loses its main offensive piece, like whatever it is that week that could really do damage, it's just a bunch of guys that are gonna sit there and not do anything. Like you said, these are fake walls. Uxie is good, but it doesn't stay around forever. Road of Heat, because it has to be boots, doesn't stay around forever. Um, Wellspring is great. I think Wellspring is definitely the best uh, Ogre Pond in draft, in my opinion. So I, I like this team almost specifically because of Darkrai, Petron, and Flamigo. And I, and I like Blastoise. I think you could change some of these things up to make it better, though. I'm not saying I know what I would do. I also don't really like Comfy if it's not Terra. I feel like when it's stuck as yeah. a family, it's really being limited in what it can do. Yeah, I have um, that as a point here. Non-Terra uh, Comfy, it's like pure support, in my opinion. It's like Leech Seed, it's Synthesis, it's U-Turn, Knock Off, that kind of thing. Yeah. Which I think is actually what it should be on this team, because I think this team needs that. It needs, like, the Leech Seed health back. Uh, yeah. Rotom Heat and Uxie, they do have Pain Split now, which is nice. I just don't think it's enough. I, I think these walls yeah. are gonna, like, buckle under pressure a lot. Yeah. And, I mean, you know more, like, everyone knows I'm a huge Petron believer. It's, like, yeah. my PFP. I love Petron. I just feel like Petron's, like, atlas on this team he's like atlas carrying the world on his back oh, yeah. trying to yeah. be the defensive piece that holds it all together 
since it's still no people listening to this, if you haven't really seen the Petron, it really is physical slow King Gallic. Like that's the way I've been using it on the teams and I have it on. It's quite good. It's not like a joke. It's very, very good. So yeah, uh, that's kind of, and then I guess we could talk about like uh, the other two Terras. Like I said, Tauros. I think Tauros is fine. It can be like Ice Beam special. I've seen that. I've seen it work de to decent effect, but it's, it's not something you're super threatened by in my opinion. You know what no, I mean? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's almost always going to be Life Orb or it loses a lot of its power. You know, I've been a Tauros fan since back in the day when it was the best Pokemon, but I feel like it's something you think should be good, but it's always going to do just too little damage. It's always going to leave them with like 12 health when you wish it would have killed them. It's that kind of guy. And then like Solo Dug Trio, no Arena Trap, it, mm -hmm. no other ground. I think you uh, need like a pretty good ground in draft in my opinion. And I don't think Dug Trio does the job if i'm gonna uh, be honest he, about it my man is just kind of randomly here i'm i know he's here because he's a ground but hey he's fast yeah he's got speed all right on to the next okay so next up we got the moochin 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 embors i believe that might be how you pronounce it well do you know exactly how it's pronounced uh, me, me, chin, me, chin, me, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, well, it's an umlaut. It should be a eh, me, me, something like that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, uh, I think a little bit higher on this team than you, uh, if I remember correctly. I really like Roaring Moon Caldeo. I think Caldeo is severely, severely underrated in draft. I think it, it now that it has flip churn and vacuum wave. It's like a really perfect special attacker. It's really incredibly strong. I think the two, the double wall zap the double flying wall Zapdos uh, Skarmory. I think that's really good. I like Mock, uh, and I think Zangus Terra. It's a pretty good option in my opinion. I think the Terras here are a little bit weird, but uh, I I do like Zangus as a Terra personally. Um, I do think this team has a few issues. Mamoswine. I don't know if it's 100% necessary. I, its power is pretty good, but it's it's not the fastest thing in the world. And you have Sandslash as a ground, and in my opinion, Sandslash might have to come every game, which I know sounds bad. And I think Sandslash is actually going to be the main Terra option of this team because it's the spinner, and it's also like one of the key defensive pieces, in my opinion, on this team. Uh, so the Typhlosion Hisui is not Terra, which isn't great. I think Sableye being Terra isn't... Like, Sableye's typing is already pretty good. I don't think it's 100% necessary. But I do like Mach. I do like... Like, I like the two main offensive pieces and the two main defensive pieces a lot. Which is kind of why I have this up here. And I don't hate Sandslash, especially if it is, like, the main Terra... Like, Terra Fairy Sandslash, I think, could, like, slot very nicely in this team. This team doesn't actually have a Fairy type, is which is pretty crazy. It has no, like, uh, actual Fairy type. I think, like... Terra Fairy Sandslash might be the fairy type that comes the most often, if I had to guess. And Mew, I don't know what it's going to do. I, I, I don't know what Mew's going to do in this team. It's kind of awkward. Uh, I think, like, Mew, Mamoswine, and Typhlosion Hisui are kind of the odd men out here. They could maybe be changed, but uh, I, I, I kind of like the core a good amount, and th that's just how I feel about it. I, I like the way the, the core looks. And this team has a... Like, really nice speed tiers. It's not necessarily, like, Moon is the fastest at 119, I believe. So it's not, like, blitzingly fast, but, like, each Mon speed tier, like, hits a certain level to, like, make it so you you can't, there's not, like, a massive gap in between any yeah. of the Mons, which makes it pretty nice. They're also annoying numbers. I think Kelly is, like, 106 or something. Like, it's, like, an annoying number. Yeah. Which is just so. over everything else. Um... I like a lot of these guys. I think Zangus could be really good. Like I had my eye on this one as well as Flamigo. I think just like Swords Dance, Terra Normal, Toxic thing, Quick Attack, you finish stuff at the end of the game, Facade. Yes, yeah, it has is, fighting coverage. Zangus is a little um, underrated on the list in my opinion because it has very decent sleeping potential. Yeah, Muck should probably be more points. Like it's just a good special wall. Um, if I didn't know this guy knew what he was doing, I would think he thought that Skarmory, Mew, and Zapdos, at least one of these, still had Defog. Like, I would think he thought one of these guys still had it. Um, my feeling with this team is it looks like it should have one more really good guy on it. Like, it's really good. Like, there's, I don't think there's anything actually wrong with this. Like, it's a very solid team. I just don't look at and go, oh man, I have to deal with this. Like, Kelio's really good, but it's not overwhelming. 
Moon's really good, but it's not overwhelming. Just nothing here is overwhelming me, and it's not so balanced that I'm worried about like playing a 60 turn game against this team. Now, what I will say is, if someone rolls up with this team, they're going to be either be an amazing player or pr probably not very good. I think this guy's probably going to be really good. He makes the the document, so he has to be good. So I feel like Muse, I don't know what Mew does, like you said, but I know when we see it, it's going to be funny for everybody except the person playing against it. Um, yeah, that's, I, I, that, that, that's my feeling is that I I can't give a lot of analysis on, on it other than like there's, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just not, it has no wow factor to me. I don't see this and go, oh man, I got to play Roaring Moon and Keldeo. Like that's solid, but I'm not like, oh, how do I deal with this? That's my opinion. Yeah, I, I think... Uh... Like Mew could be offensive on this team, like another all, uh, a lot because uh, you have like the Hazard Setter and Skarmory. I, I think like Mew has a chance to do something offensive here with like maybe like Scale Shot SD or just Dragon Dance, something like that could be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been running like for a joke team, I've been running Cosmic Power, Body Press, Stored Power, Rest. If yeah. you don't have something to deal with that, that wins almost every game. Yeah, um, I mean, you can you, definitely you, you, do you, shit. Like you can do a lot of different setup. It just can no, it can no longer really be a reliable wall because they nuked all its recovery and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think if because this is an eleven Pokemon Mon team, if I'm looking, I think like if Typhlosion, Hisui, and Mamoswine were like converge together into like a Supermon, like yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I feel like it yeah. should have one more really good guy. Like this, yeah, team, like just the name. Like if this really team has strong. Backscalibur on it, like I know it doesn't fit with typing, but just some big one yeah. more big name. I think it would be like uh, I, again, it doesn't fit, but I know because he has Keldeo, but uh, Iron, Iron Bundle, Bundle is still yeah, available. Just a bit, just a, a superstar. This is a yeah. lot of good role players, like solid all star yeah. players. We need like I, I a think, superstar. I think Keldeo is close to super. I, I'm really it's close. Yeah, it's close. This is like the Boston Celtics right now. Yeah, it's just um, missing that that secret sauce. And I also like uh like I like Vacuum Wave. I like the Ice Shard from Mamoswine, even though I think Mamoswine isn't necessary. This team is de I think this team has decent priority. I I do. This team has like a weird water weakness. Like it, it's something because it, the the water type, the only water type is Keldeo. So the only water resists on this team are actually offensive Pokemon, which yeah, means it's like yeah, physical physical water attacks are running through this team. Yeah, physical water attacks and like just. I think even like if you just surf a bunch, like uh, you don't yeah. you don't really want to bring Skeldeo in on a surf. You know what I mean? No, you don't want to bring it in at all. Yeah, unless yeah. It's back in. So I, I think like water attacks could be problematic potentially for this team. Like a skull. I don't know who wants to switch in on the skull and take it. Uh, I, I it would have to be like Moon, which would be devastating. Moon yeah. or you know Keldeo getting burned would be really tough. Uh, maybe Zapdos, I guess, would have to take the skull. If it's like yep. Spideff, because you have Fizdef, Skarm, Spideff, uh, Zapdos, that could be a thing. Yeah. But I, I do like, like, like when I imagine a Roaring Moon, Keldeo, Zapdos, Skarmory, Terra Fire, Sandslash, or Terra uh, Fairy, Sandslash, and then Mew in the sixth slot doing whatever it does. I like that six, and that's why I have that te this team where it is. Yeah. Okay. So now we'll move on to number 10. We've reached the top 10. Okay. So I'm really, really sad about this because I really love this team. It just collapses in some really key ways. So this team has uh, got an incredible, in my opinion, Fire, Water, Grass in Skella, Dirge, Hydrapple, Milotic. Uh, it's got really nice, a really nice heads, Hazard Stetter and Clodsire. It's got Valiant who, you know, can do pretty much anything offensively, and it can even be support. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, Terra Captain into Dunsparce. So, all that's really, really good. Where does it fall short? This team has one way of getting rid of hazards. Sincino. Tidy up Sincino. Uh, so, if he's setting up hazards himself, and then hazards are getting up on the other side, and he's trying to clear hazards, he's getting rid of his own hazards... And if hazards get set up on him, it's pretty devastating because all his guys are on the ground except for like his low tiers. Um, he's got a really bad ice type weakness. Uh, I mean, he's got my Lodic and Skeledurge, but I mean, ice types, in my opinion, can be problematic for this team. He has no dark type. Uh, luckily, he has three normals, so he's got some like type overlap, in my opinion. But uh, his team's really slow. 
He's got like three fast guys, and then everyone else like craters, craters and speed. It goes from I think uh, it goes Minior, and then uh, Valiant, and then Valiant Cino, and, Chichino. Yeah, and then it like craters 80. to my Lodic. It yeah. craters to like uh, eighty-five my Lodic, I believe, which is yeah. pretty devastating. It's like a forty-point yap. So, um, I really like some of the pieces on this team a lot. Uh, it's just some like key aspects make me pause from being able to rank it any higher. Yeah, I think M Meteor and Dedunstars could both be really good. Um, I think Metagross is really good. I really wanted Cloud Sire. I think that's really good also. What I when I see this team, this is a very skill based team in my opinion. Like you have to play very well. Because if you get out of position on something that has like ground ice coverage physical, you just lose the game straight up. Uh what would that be? I don't know, but I'm Mammoth just Spine. like Mammoth Mammoth Spine, like, Excalibur, like, that kind Excalibur, of Excalibur, like something like that. It just looks uh you know, you get a little bit of chip. Because, like you said, they're going to take the... They set up rocks, they have, they knock off all your regenerator mons, they have one guy that comes in at the end, and if you don't have Ditto, then you lose. Now, to be fair, you could say that about almost any team, but I like a lot of these guys. I just, like you said, I don't know that you needed all four of Claude Sire, Milotic, Hydrapple, and Skeletor. If it was three of those guys, and then one other faster thing, yeah, I mean, this it would be better. This team has insane survivability, and... Uh... Like it's really fat and it has two unaware mons so it, it can't get set up on to stop like the fat which is nice yeah th it also this has, is it the also most anti setup team this is the most anti setup team of all time yeah so like i like the idea of having the fat guys and then stopping because usually the way you stop like stall quote unquote i don't think this team is stall but the way you stop stall is like setup can be pretty devastating but obviously stall runs unaware to stop that and having two options yeah. for that is really good and you also have ditto so I don't think anyone's ever bringing setup to this. They're just trying to like run band or specs and just punch through. Is probably what's going to happen. And also hazards because yeah, he has no hazard removal. Yeah. With a team like this, my concern is always: can it play when one of the four guys falls? Like so, Hydrapple goes down. It's the only real ground resist at all. Like unless you're yeah, bringing Meteor you or, or Vespa Queen, which you're probably not most of the weeks, right? Then you just get earthquaked into oblivion. And that's always the concern with the stall-ish team is you have to play perfectly the whole game. You can't make any mistakes or you just lose instantly. And that doesn't make the team bad because if my man uh, Noivern's plays well, this team could win every week because it'd be difficult to beat this team. They wear you down. Valiant comes in, sets up Calm Mind or Swords Dance and wins. It's got a clear strategy. Metagross, bullet, bu band, bullet punch at the end could just win. So um, he's got a good knockoff in Metagross, so if he wants to keep hazards up on the other team, that's good. And he has a great spin blocker in Skeletor. So if he plays this strategy, the other problem is it seems like, why would he ever play any other strategy than what I just said? There's not really any, like he could, but yeah. it seems like I mean, it would always be like... inferior. Be inferior to what I just said. So it's always going to be the same game. Yeah, I mean, he could run like... Prick Room? with metagross maybe and then try and run like specs hydrapple that could be something yeah i mean it's, it's not a bad plan to try to clean up with mini or iron valiant or uh metagross or the dunsmores for the moon it's not bad at all yeah um it's just you got to be able to pull it off so practice that stall stuff noivern we're gonna see it all right and on to the team at number nine we have the recently rebranded Sunny side scream tails. So this is a very uh, this team is run by uh, Mug, and this is team that's a uh, very her. I'll say that. Uh, I think this team is a uh, it, it, it's interesting in my opinion. So uh, it's got Alomomola, it's got scream tail, it's got Ting Lu, it's got Klefki, it's fat. It's got some fat pieces, um, but it also has some like really high speed tier guys at the very very top in Jolteon, Cinderace, and Meow Scarada. Uh, it does kind of take like a uh, a dip after that down to Lando. There is a bit of a... or it, it, it goes Screamtail then Lando. There is a bit of a gap there. It's not huge, but it does exist. Um, I do like the fast core three. Jolteon, Terra, Meow Scarada, Cinderace. Um, here, and it has a lot of pivoting this team, which I really really like. 
Here's my kind of issue with this team and my issue with a few of the teams that uh, Mug runs, a few of like the things that happens. There's a lot of role overlap. There's like a lot of support Pokemon, like Alomomola, Screamtail, and Klefki, a lot of really, uh, in like Altaria, a lot of really passive Pokemon, which in my opinion, uh, at least that, I, I know Screamtail can be like Calm Mind setup, uh, but a lot of these mods can only be good, like a lot of these passive Pokemon can only be good if they're set up, and if you know setup is coming, it's very easy to play around. So if these Pokemon are in their passive role, it really forces kind of like role compression in my opinion, because you know Cinderace and Meowskarada are also operating in a similar role, and so it's like, I, I feel like a lot of these Pokemon are doing very similar things. Um, I think like uh, Altaria, non-Mega, or, or not Mega, non-Terra, only option to get rid of Hazards because Cinderace, uh, uh, Court Change, doesn't really get rid of Hazards, it changes Hazards, which means they can just set them up again. Um, I, like, I know it exists, and, but it would just be Hazards on both sides, which I think is pretty bad for Mug, who's going to be switching a lot with a lot of momentum-based moves. And this should be a hazard setting team. Yeah, so if you're ha setting hazards and then flipping them back to you, that's pretty bad. So you have no spinner, so if you are going to defog, you're getting rid of your own hazards. I just think the hazard control on this team isn't the greatest. Um, we got Fion there, uh, a, a mug special. Mug loves Fion. I think Fion is very... Uh, I, I, it's been somewhat successful. I think if you plan for it at all, which is take heart, plan for take heart at all, run trick, run encore, run, I mean, I know it's Terra Fairy, run Whirlwind, run Dragon Tail if it's not going to be Terra Fairy. If you do any of that, Fion kind of becomes like a non factor in my opinion. Um, Gla Glaceon, I, I, it, it can be Wish. I think, uh, like, Calm Mind Glaceon isn't horrible. Uh, I like Ting Lu a lot. I, I, I do like Ting Lu, I like Lando. I think this team has like an ice it, it, an ice issue. It has multiple times for ice weeks and like key Pokemon. The, like Altaria has to come sometimes because it has Defog, Lando T. You want to bring Lando T. Ting Lu, you, you, you want to bring Ting Lu. So like you have all these Pokemon weak to ice. So I think a Loma Mola could, could uh, be looking to like really carry the world on its shoulder with that. Freeze Dry, I think could really devastate this team. Yeah, uh, just like special really ice moves. Yeah, just yeah. special ice moves in general. So, um, yeah, I, I I do like it, and like Mug's really familiar with all with these guys. Uh, she can really like pilot these guys pretty expertly. But I I I feel like some of these guys just do the same thing a lot of the time, and it can and um the like win cons on this team, which uh, are like you know Meowskarada. Cinderace, uh, I guess Jolteon. Uh, they're, they're really more like Whittlers, in my opinion. They're, they're, they're like fast, you know, U Turners and like Pyro Ballers or like Flower Trick Triple Axlers. And then Streamtail, I'm guessing. I, I know the Calm Mindset uh, is a thing. Again, like with all this like setup of relatively weak Pokemon, Trick, Encore, it's all a thing. Um, I, I think this team is setup bait kind of like it can get set yeah. up on yeah. and overwhelmed pretty easily yeah. so what uh, i think when i see this like when i see a loma mola and i'm not national national decks a loma mola one of the top 10 pokemon when i see it in paldea decks this is an automatic substitute by the other team like you see it out there you sub on it and then it can't ever break the sub so then you get freedom to do whatever you want this team i think would be much better if there was an unaware mod last year abbotsford had it with uh, Skeledurge, that makes it a lot more useful because then you can't, it doesn't matter if it gets set up on. But um, like you said, the the team clearly wants to stack hazards and set screens, and that's what the player likes to do. It uses a lot of light screen. And then the Cinderace just flips the screen to the other side. So then you have to use offensive Cinderace, offensive Meowskarada. They like offensive Screamtail. They like offensive Ting Lu. So, um, I think because you said that they have a lot of role overlap, we kind of start using Pokemon in suboptimal ways, which it can work sometimes because people don't expect it, but now we've kind of come to expect these unexpected things. 
So um, I like a lot of the guys, and I think in a perfect world, you know, you're wish passing to Ting Lu, you're wish passing to Lando, you're being super annoying, uh, you're setting the hazards, you're knocking people, you're knocking people off with Meow Scarada, and you're just annoying people, and you stay alive longer than the other team. But I, like you said, I do think this team is very susceptible to getting out of position, getting substituted on, and then getting swept. So we're going to see a lot of whirlwind yeah. on Ting Lu. Um, and I think this team's like very susceptible to getting hazards stacked on it, and then because this is a very momentum-based team, like look at the top four, and then Jolteon, Lando, and like Fion. These all these guys are going to be like baton passing and flip turning and U turning, and if that's happening and there's hazards up, you're in for like a very world of hurt. Unless you're just running boots on everything, which in that case, yeah. you know, all your item slots are wasted on boots. That's unfortunate yeah. in itself. But this team does have talent. Like this, I think this could be a playoff team for sure because it has a lot of good guys. Yeah, I mean, it, having Wish on three guys who can all like baton pass or flip turn the Wish out into other guys, it's very, very devastating. Uh, I just, I, I do like, like, uh, obviously when you have like Lando, Cinderace, uh, Meow Scarada, your physical presence, yeah. like your raw physical presence is just massive you're going to be doing a lot of raw damage just hitting as hard as possible it'd be harder if this if, if cinderace was any really good rapid spinner like if that was Tarapagos, this team would kind of be crazy like i would be afraid to play this team i would think it was really good um but like i said the hazard like conundrum seems very counterproductive and counterintuitive with this team and i think that's what's holding it back all right and with that we move on to our team at number eight a team that i'm a uh, a little bit higher on than you i think the charleston chesnauts so here's what i see when i see this team i see a lot of pokemon that hold real actual value i think all of these pokemon have value in a way that every team before this there was like at least one pokemon that i didn't fully see uh what its purpose was on this team, you know, Bax, Gloking, I think it's probably the best core you can do. Uh, in draft, it gets drafted. I think it, it got drafted twice, and it probably would have gotten drafted three times if we allowed Gloking to get back to the Bax user in Sunset. Uh, everyone knows it's good. Everyone uh, can see how devastating it can be. I think Manaphy has become a little underrated in draft. No one drafts it. I think, like, with Tail Glow, it can immediately become a massive threat. It gets plus three auto. Dawn Fan is one of the best rapid spinners. I love it. Uh, it is the only way of getting rid of hazards on this team, but it should just come every week anyways. So I don't, like, that is a knock, but it's not, like, the most massive knock. Uh, the Terras on this team are probably easily the best Terras we've had so far. Miss Magius and Wochian, both excellent Terra options. Sylveon's a great fairy. You know, it could wish pass. It could be specs if you want it to. Lucky Rock Dusk without Terra, uh, it, it's all right in my opinion. It, it, it can uh, be banded. It has a Cell Rock that's pretty strong. Bronzong on your Steel, I think Bronzong is like really important to this team, and it has no recovery, which is unfortunate. But it does, uh, you know, with Sylveon, pair decently. So like potentially Sylveon could baton pass some wishes to Bronzong maybe, and Morgrim can set up some screens. It, you know, it's a it's a late tier Mon for a reason. So it's not going to be like amazing. It's not Grim Snarl, but it can set up some screens, which is always value, and that can help Bax Caliber and Manaphy set up. I see the vision. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I see what this team's doing. I really like Wochian as a wall. Um, I think uh, the the survivability of the walls, because of Sylveon's wish and its ability to wish into Bronzong pretty decently, I think that's good. Um, I think Wochian's survivability is obviously pretty decent with its Leech Seed. Uh, shenanigans that it always likes to run this team is very very slow uh it's bit highest base speed is 110 in lichen rock and then it goes 105 and then 100 so it, like you has three guys 100 or above but like it barely breaks 100 or above this team has like no fire or fighting types which aren't like super necessary types from like a defensive or team construction perspective but you're missing those like offensive powers against steals uh, in particular, uh, which could be really annoying because this team has a steel and fairy weakness. I think like steels are pretty devastating for this team. And because this team has a steel and fairy weakness, Bronzong becomes even more important. And this team also has like a uh, low hazard output. It's really only got rockers, uh, can't really set up spikes. 
in any meaningful way. Uh, you do get T spikes with Glow King, but you usually don't want to use a slot from Glow King on that. And uh, this team, it, it can pivot defensively, like uh, Sylveon can pivot, um, but uh, and like Wargrim has Parting Shot, and Sloking has Chili, obviously, which is amazing. But uh, offensively, like only uh, the only Manaphy can flip turn, and you don't really want Manaphy to flip turn if you're running Tail Glow, which is probably the best set uh, available. But like Lycan Rock backs, they're stuck in; they can't like U turn or anything. And Miss Magius is stuck in. So I, I get what the team's going for. I think this is like a very good like baseline with just some really key elements lacking, like some cohesion pieces lacking. Yeah, I think the team makes sense. Uh, like you said, the speed issue is is huge because you know, and it's going to let things run attack boosting nature. It's like they're going to be doing more damage than they should. There's one ten in draft, and like in rock, dusk is never going to be scarf. Almost never. Like it'd be really, it'd be really weird if it was. It's not a common set. Uh, Miss Magius would be most of the time. I think that's not a weird set. You know, Miss Magius just terror ghost choice scarf would be pretty good. But other than that, we don't even have a logical choice scarf user on this team. Like I said, Manaphy could do it, but why? Lycanroc Rock Dusk could do it, but why? There's good priority though. You know, Max Calvin, the strongest ice shard. Lycanroc Rock Dusk, the only priority rock move. So, flying types want no part of this team whatsoever. Yeah, and you also got like Don Fan ice shard, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Um, we said if it had one more fast offensive guy with a switch move to really bring in Baxcalibur and Terramis Magius, I think it would be like if Wochien could switch, that would be great. But Wochien is a really good Terra captain. I think it's sad you can't pair it with Terramis Magius, and that kind of sucks because that together would be good. Like a strong imagine, host type with Wochien. Imagine like Reggie Alecki was on this team as our second spinner and also as like a Volter. <laughs> Yeah, you need, they need one more fast guy, because I like all these guys. Like, the fact Sylveon was just a free agent is crazy. Um, same thing if, if like, Bronzong had some stupid switch move. Like, it would just be much better. I just feel like there's a small lack of momentum. Like, he wants to get the Pax Caliber in more than he can. And so it's going to limit his ability to run, like, a choice band set or something that's going to have to rely on setup more, because it's not going to get as many chances to attack. And yeah. I think, like, same so thing with Manaphy, is, like, to... No, go ahead. Yeah, so what this is really going to rely on to work is Sloking coming in, taking a hit, and then taking another hit to Chili into Bax. That's what it's going to have to do, is, like, take two hits in order to get the Chili to Bax, so that Bax can get in for free, because you don't have any other pivots to really do it with, so Sloking's going to have to be the one pivoting into Bax. Yeah, but, I mean, if Bax Caliber, Sloking, Manaphy, Donphan, Sylveon, and Wochi and played well should be able to go 500 done like i think that's pretty good i just don't think he has enough options or speed to beat consistently the higher level teams all right and with that we're gonna move on to our number seven team a team that i am very split on the new jersey dracos this is a I feel sick like terrain it team yeah, I feel like we're of two. We we might be the same with this. There's something about when I look at this that makes me think it's not going to be good, but it should be good. But I just think it. I just have a weird feeling about it. I think this team could very easily crash and burn. Um, I'm gonna hope that it doesn't because I do really like psychic terrain in draft. I think it's cool. It blocks all priority. This team is fast. It's got. <laughs> <laughs> Deoxys Speed, it's got Electrode, it's got Sneasler with Unburden. This team is coming at you 110, 100 miles per hour. It's, it's coming at you Blitzen, because Crook can also be Scarf. Ogre Pond's there at 110. That could be Scarf if it wanted to. Um, the, so you don't have to worry about speed with this team. Psychic Terrain helps out Sneasler, helps out Dio Speed. I do wish this team had like one more psychic terrain you since you since you're like committed to psychic terrain kind of I, I wish i had one more psychic terrain abuser you know what i mean because those are really the only two like fully taking advantage of it um this team has really great hazards deal speeds great with hazards it can set up reflex which can have reflex and light screens which can help sneezler set up or like calm mind terapagos could help that it has ha good hazard control it's got colossal it's got terapagos so like hazards wise i think this team's like 
it's the first team that's like really good to go. You know what I mean? This team's good to go hazards wise, in my opinion. It's got strong offensive pivoting. You know, Sneasler can U-turn, Primarina can flip turn, uh, Ogre Pond can U-turn, Electrodes Volt switching around. Uh, this team has no flying type. So, you know, it's not super necessarily like weak to ground, especially if Colossal Terra's out, but ground types can hit it. And the only immunity is Orthworm, which uh, I think Orthworm's actually a pretty good immunity to ground because it also resists rock which ground types like to cover for like flying for example but having yeah. no flying type is uh pretty interesting and i think the main drawback of this team which i guess we could talk about the defensive backbone they have no recovery they they're gonna they're gonna fall fast these games yeah. are gonna be fast with this team yeah it's, it's gonna be over real quick this is this, yeah. these are these are 20 turning under games uh <laughs> because uh it's no no sustainability i don't think there's a single mon here who has any recover uh ogre pond ogre pond has synthesis other yeah. than that um you know it's not looking great there is a, a mini speed gap between crocodile and earthworm but that's like in the lower points anyways that's 92 to like 65 so like the 80s like an 80 could theoretically be adamant like i think bax caliber could be adamant against this team which would be annoying yeah. um and the i said the offensive pivoting was good the defensive pivoting not so much the defensive walls i think like colossal earthworm uh even crocodile i think crocodile is like a good like defensive mod like rocky helmet stealth rocks can be nice but it has no pivoting and it has no recovery and neither does terrapagos and uh fighting types are a little problematic for this team there's no ghost so you can just kind of spam fighting moves into this team i, I like primarina doesn't, doesn't want to take like it will take a close combat but it doesn't love taking not it, you well know what I mean? yeah not less and, the and sneezler obviously doesn't want to take a close combat either orthworm not being terra sucks uh it's unfortunate because i think terra ghost orthworm is really really nice but yeah. uh i do like the three terra captains even if orthworm isn't terra because of it so yeah i mean this team's coming at you 100 100 thousand miles per hour it's hitting you hard if you can survive it you'll probably win if you can survive the initial onslaught whatever the game plan is like whatever jersey plans that week if it works they'll win like, like if it works in the first three or four turns they'll win if it doesn't they're probably done you know what i mean like if you can survive the initial yeah. onslaught you'll tend your ten, you'll, you'll get your way through this yeah i think a lot of these guys are really good i really wanted to rock ghost i think it's really good primarina should be like 20 more points like it's a really really good pokemon I'm not sure this type of team works in high level draft play. Um, if I was going to use Dio Speed, I don't, I feel like the psychic terrain thing is bait with it. I feel like you just use it as a cleanup with just nasty plot, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and a psychic move, and then you build the rest of the team to whittle things down. So I, I see, obviously, it makes sense what they're trying to do with the Sneasler. As somebody who's used Sneasler, and went to the finals with it. It took me four or five games to realize that in burden doesn't work as well as just being choice scar for choice band the majority of the time. Um, so I think this team relies on catching people not prepared for it or that they just won't be able to handle the offense. And again, I think it's, I feel like we moved to a different tier of teams. Like everything above eight is slightly higher level. And I think this team might toast the ones we've already talked about but I feel like the higher teams can... All you have to do with this team is be able to wall the sweepers for like two turns and then you win the game. That's what I see with this, unless he's cooking up some different variations of what it looks like it should be. But um, on paper, this looks really, really good, but I have the sneaking suspicion as somebody who's tried to run teams like this against good people in draft that I don't think it'll work as well as it looks like it should. Yeah, and with that, we're going to move on to number six. We're real, uh, this was the top half, but now we're really, you know, deep in the trenches of the top half of the team. So we're operating with, like, teams we consider good now, like, really good. Because I don't think there's necessarily, like, a super bad teams in this draft, but we're operating with the top half. These are, like, yeah. pretty I viable thought all teams. The teams. I thought all the teams, except for my man who missed the draft, essentially... There are no bad teams. Like, all of these could end up playoff teams, in my opinion. Like, there's none you look at and go, wow, this is just garbage. Like, I, I don't think we have any like that. Yeah, for sure. All right, so now we're moving on to six, the New York Malamars, a.k.a. you. Yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, I'll give my thoughts, and then you can kind of uh, give your thoughts for the team that uh, you made here. So, this is... I. Mean, it, it, 
there's not super like in-depth analysis to do in my opinion because it's it's rain right it, it's it's rain it's got pelipper it's got tornado therian um it's got arcaladon uh uh it's got a uh, floatzel floatzel in my opinion really really strong uh terror captain we we didn't let it terror before now we finally are i think uh teams that are ill prepared no water immunity or like a bad grass type or like their water isn't a bulky water floatzel could literally just tear through the entire team um torn t it can hit all its moves here or not all its moves again it focus blast doesn't change it can hit its hurricanes here um I, a, a lucky could like theoretically run thunder you it's because other water types are going to be like strong against you you've got gastrodon with the storm drain which is nice uh i think iron crown you know it's not going to have a fire weakness in the rain so that's nice it gives it a higher opportunity to set up and if uh uh rillaboom has terrain up it also doesn't have a um what's it called either it doesn't have a ground weakness because of grassy terrain so uh i think rillaboom on this team is actually you know it's pretty decent it's pretty good you obviously always want to grass on uh rain and i think uh rillaboom's a pretty good one here uh i think amoongus is also a pretty good option but rillaboom lets our caladon eat some like ground moves it lets uh you know you've got a few ground weeks here avalug pre terra uh regieleki iron crown so that it lets them all eat those ground moves that it needs to eat um so i think this team has like a good chance of like overwhelming uh opponents offensively and then it's got a pretty decent uh back backbone with like uh avalug and Florges, the really fat defensive wall the really fat spadef wall um they both have recovery you know gastrodon also has recovery gastrodon gets spikes now which is nice obviously one of like the devastating things about running rain is you're gonna have type overlap which means you're gonna be missing types you don't got a dark you don't got a grounded poison you don't have a fire so you you really got like not necessarily one plan of attack, but you're you're attacking with like you're you're putting your chest out here with what you're doing. Uh, weather can be very predictable, and it can also be stopped. You know, weather can be changed. A chilly reception here, a sunny day there, can be pretty issue, a pretty big issue. Ghost, dark, and fairy types they could all you know run moves that hurt really hard for your team because of you know those typing issues I mentioned earlier. I do really like Iron Crown here. I think that was a great pickup. I think Iron Crown helps this team out immensely, both with its typing. You know, in, in uh, National Decks, uh, Assault Vest Iron Crown, you don't even have to necessarily be set up. Assault Vest Iron Crown with like Volts, which has been really, really good. This team's pivoting, I think, is pretty decent. You know, you got R Rillaboom with U turn, you got Torn, one of the greatest pivoters ever. Pelipper, Regieleki, Crown, uh, Floatzel, all good turners. Uh, Floor just gets a baton pass. Uh, the hazard control here is pretty decent with, you know, Aleki. Uh, I like Aleki as a spinner because it's always, like, fast and it can pretty much guarantee get the spin off. And if uh, they go their ghost, you can just volt turn, volt switch right after. Uh, the hazards you have yourself, not fantastic. You got, like, Avalug, uh, or Caledon himself could be, like, uh, Stealth Rock. But when you're under rain, or Caledon wants to kind of go on, that off on the offensive roll or, like, set up maybe. Um... Gastrodon has spikes and Stealth Rock. I think that's really your main hazard Pokemon here. So I think Gastrodon's actually uh, more important to this team than people may realize. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of like a unique rain. It only has one, like, Swift Swimmer. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's like a unique take on rain that I think uh, could work pretty good. It, where, like, you don't necessarily have to bring rain, but I think this team is strongest when rain is on the field. Yeah, so what I was trying to do is I wanted to, I don't think just weather can work against high level play. So I wanted to have options to where in theory, the team could work without it. And while it wouldn't be good, it would be serviceable. Um, and then if the weather strategy works, like if people, if you've never seen what Floatzel does, like this one hit KO Zapdos, one hit KOs, essentially anything that doesn't resist at all, like 80% to fully defensive Petron, two hit KOs, Aloma Mola with Stealth Rock up, like fully defensive Aloma Mola. Like the calculations are crazy on this thing. Um, Look at him laughing. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy, but uh, Tornado's Theory hits all the moves in the rain. Archaladon in rain is banned for a reason. Like. I'm interested to see because I'm not convinced that it can work 
against really good people with tools if they know it's coming. But I'm interested to see if it if it can, because I think that it has a lot more variations. Like, I think Crown is really good. I wish I had Claude Sire, which is who I really wanted, and I wanted Terrapagos. Other than that, I essentially got the team that I wanted. I kind of pivoted to Aleki. That was my second choice. I'm a bit concerned about um, the hazard removal. I wish I had Defog because I think people bring screens against me a lot. So I wish I had a way to have that on the team. But like you said, if you're going to run this team, at the end of the day, this is offense, right? So if I'm not winning, that. yeah, I, this is offense. I'm, yeah, I'm an, off, I'm an offensive player. Like I'm here to hit stuff and then get out. So I'd like to have some ability to play defensively. Like, What's my plan to beat Spectrier? I'm going to outspeed it with Floatzel and kill it. What's my plan to beat Dragapult? I'm going to outspeed it with Floatzel and kill it. Like, that's the best we have. And it's still, it's it's harder to stop than you think it is. You think, oh, here's my plan to stop Floatzel. And then it just one hit KOs at your whole team. So. Yeah. The only, like, real definitive way is if you have, like, a water absorber or something yeah. like that. And that can be pretty devastating for Floatzel. Yeah. And the thing, when I was looking at it, when I was trying to figure out the Terra types, you know, if you do Terra Grass, Terra Blast, Physical, and it can be special too, because it still has over 100 special attack. So thinking this thing is just going to be the same thing every week, think like it should, most of the time it will be, yeah, but it can do more than you think it can, especially because it has the advantage of you think you know exactly what all these guys are going to do. And they don't have to do that. Our Chaladon can be physical. Tornadus can be physical. Rillaboom can be Leech Seed. Iron Crown can be set up or AV, Spec, Scarf. Like, I actually think, like you said, Iron Crown, when I figured out that I needed this, it really helps the team. Like, I've been testing a lot with Iron Crown, and it's difficult to survive the weather, then survive Iron Crown at the end if you don't have stuff left to kill it. So, I wish I had a Dark type. I wish I had something to deal with ghosts, and I wish I had a poison type, but I I don't think you could build this core and have that on the team. So I'm interested to see what happens. I'm not convinced it's good, but uh, it's going to be funny at some point. It's going to be funny. All right. And with that, we'll move on to numero five. <laughs> Coming in at number five, we got the Luscious Lopunnies. Okay. This team, I have like a hard time really describing what it is about it I like and what I don't like. I really like the first three picks. Golden Go, Hydreigon, and Amorous. That's a really, really strong uh, Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Uh, you know, Golden Go with webs. I like with Araquanid. Araquanid's not Terra, which is unfortunate. And also Diancie, who is Terra, and can set up spikes. I like the, like the hazard setters on this team. Diancie and Weezing, they can both set hazards. Weezing with toxic spikes, obviously. And then Golden Go can block those. So that's obviously like an emphasis to help out Enamorous and Hydreigon and Blaziken. I think Blaziken's pretty key to this team as like the main setup sweeper to take advantage of those hazards. So, um,. All that's really good. I like all these mons, like, in general. Other than maybe Mudsdale, who I think is kind of, um... I, I, I said it, like, a long time ago with Philly now. It's, it's, he's like a fake wall, kind of. He he's gets... He's like a, a really... He's like a decent low point value ground. I think this team could benefit a lot from having, like, a high point value, really good ground. Um, for sure. Um, I think Serena is a pretty good rapid spinner. It is the only... Oh, I think Weezing gets Defog. So those are the Hazard Removal, which isn't terrible. Um, the Terror Captains, they're pretty good. Like I said, Arachnid, I wish, was a Terror Captain. This team's pretty slow. Uh, Raikou, 115, is the highest. And then I believe it goes Enamorous. And then Hydreigon, and we're kind of just falling off from there. Blaziken, luckily, has Speed Boost, which is nice. So it can get its speed up uh, however high it needs to. I think this team has a really high reliance on Golden Go for Resists. Because it has a weak ice weakness, a pretty bad one, and then um, your water is Araquanid, so it's not really taking hits. It's not like a bulky water, especially uh, physically. It has a, a lot of spadef, but um, I think this team, like the low tiers, are a little bit awkward in a way that's hard to describe. I uh, like I think 
fitting them all together can be a bit of a challenge. Araquanid as your only water, I think, is really what's doing it for me in terms of the awkwardness. And then uh, Mudsdale being like the pure ground, like the ground that you're relying on. Um, these guys don't have, have like recovery uh, other than like leech life from Araquanid. I think he gets life due. And then like draining kiss from Diancy. It's not like 50% reliable recovery. Weezing gets pain split. It's all like kind of like a weird recovery other than Serena who does get synthesis. Uh, which I do like. I, I, I wish like Serena was a terror cap. I, I wish they were all they could all be terror captains, but obviously they can't. So that's unfortunate. But because I think all those mons are much better being terror captains. I don't think Serena needs to be a terror captain. It, the one that really sticks out is Araquanid for sure. Um, this team has all the necessary roles filled, though, in my opinion. Uh, it's got like you know the fast electric. It, it's it's got like a uh, defensive steel. It's got like its offensive dragon and fairy core. Uh, which is nice. Uh, Diancy's there to set up the hazards. It's pretty clear, like, what the plan is. It's, you know, Diancy gets up hazards, so does Araquanid with sticky webs. Golden Go blocks, and then, you know, Hydreigon gets up a nasty plot or something, or Blaziken Swords Dance uh, speed boost, and it leads to, like, some sort of sweep in the end game after a little bit of chip. I think, like, that's the idea here, and I do like it. I think, like, uh, the low tiers... I don't even know if they could be better. I just don't know if they're... Like, when you're using low tier walls... Uh, it, it, it can sometimes be challenging to like really take hits. Yeah, this now we're moving into the teams. Like I think, if they win, I wouldn't be surprised. I like this team. Uh, Blaziken is really hard to prep for if you like if it's been a while since you've played against it or you don't remember all the things it can do. It's really annoying to try to play around it. Even it does not need to sword dance. It still does a lot of damage. Yeah, it kills itself. But if it takes two and a half guys with it, you might just lose on the face of it. Anamorous is one of the better offensive Pokemon. Moonblast plus Earth Power is really all it needs to just always be devastating. And then the couple of times it runs sub and you think it's going to be Specs or Scarf, you just lose. Uh, Hydreigon is a classic and a really good partner for Golden Go. And I'm hoping we see more like bulky or even offensive Golden Go to where it's not just here to keep the webs up, although it, it looks like that's what it's for because it has it can do a lot more things. And I'd like to see somebody really make use of the offensive capabilities. Like, I think also we have a lot of hazard spreaders here. Like just the Golden Go set with Thunder Wave would be really good on this team to slow things down for Hydreigon and an Amorous Blaziken. Like maybe we don't use the webs. But like you yeah, said, my first... Yeah, my first thought was I really wanted Araquanid to tear water and just hit shit. I really wanted to see that, and I'm sad that we're not seeing it because I feel like it's just going to be Webb's bot, and that's unfortunate to me. But I, I like this team. I, Deancey's still a crazy Terra captain, so I'm, I can't be mad at that. Weezing is weird to me. I'm not sure why it's... Yeah, Weezing Terra captain is like obviously for defensive purposes. I think it could have been Mudsdale maybe, but I, I know obviously Deancey plus uh, Araquanid wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Um, I, I I wish Diancy was Fairy instead of Rock, but uh, for like Draining Kiss, like Calm Mind Draining Kiss sets, I know those are pretty good. I I do agree that Golden Go. I mean, Golden Go can do a whole bunch of things because it, it's always blocking uh, the webs anyway. So it could be offensive and still do that. Uh, I like Thunder Wave Recover, like a uh, nasty plot, uh, make it rain, or like something like that, or like Scarf is pretty good as well. Uh, especially on this team, which isn't very fast. I think Scarf could be something that comes more than once, potentially. But, yeah, because uh, they, do, they do have a lot of good Scarfers to make up for the skier. Like, Enamorous, Hydreigon, Golden Go, all, like, real Scarfers that are a normal set. Um, yeah. And then I, I think, like, uh, you could even run, like, theoretically, uh, a Scarf, like, uh, a Raikou if you really want to get fast. I've seen that before. Because, uh, but I, Raikou could be, like, Sub, Calm Mind, that's a set. I, yeah. Raikou hasn't really seen much use in the PBO. I think it's better than people give credit for, but it, yeah. is, it is like pretty straightforward what it does. It does it, have, it, it, like it, it has surprising bulk. You know, we used to use yeah, it. It's pretty fast. We used, yeah, we used to use it as a defensive Pokemon back in the day. Like you could run the Suicune set, but with Raikou, and it would just be more offensive and not quite as defensive. But if this thing had Parabolic Charge, that'd be crazy. Gave her, give Raikou Parabolic Charge. Yeah, for sure. All right. After that, we've got number four. We're creeping up to the top now. And coming in at number four, we've got the Frederick Clefkeys. So this team, uh, 
a little bit top heavy probably but really really devastating one two punch garchomp uh spectre cannot be messed with samurai's there samurai's strong gets up the spikes for those two as well iron hands iron hands always seems to be able to take one or two with it no matter what it doesn't stay around forever because it can't really heal outside of drain punch but iron hands always seems to have the uncanny ability to take one or two with it and just get some real value it has the coverage to hit like everything on a team usually with like ice punch ground move or heavy slam plus uh thunder punch obviously and drain punch it has really really nice coverage um, I really like Braviary Hisui as a Terra Captain. I wanted it lowered to Terra Captain status specifically for this because I think it could potentially be really good as one. Uh, Scarf sets or like Esper Wing or Life Orb or something like that. I think all that's really viable. Uh, Talon Flame's a pretty good, you know, defensive Pokemon in my opinion. Uh, offensively, it can do like Sword Dance. I think that's not super viable most of the time. Um, Quillfish Hisui, really good Hazard Setter, good Intimidator, nice Ghost Resist. And then uh, I think Appleton is very, very key to this team because this team doesn't really have, um, you know, it's Tinkaton and it's Fortress they, they, and Iron Hands in the top four. They all don't recover health. So Appleton needs to recover health. So does Talonflame. But I, I think Talonflame is pretty key to this team too, to be honest. Talonflame and Reco Appleton are like the only ones who can recover health. So they're the ones coming in to take the hits and then switching back out, uh, either with a pivot move or just hard switching. And... Um, so I really like the damage on this team. I like the ability to get up hazards. Uh, I think the Terra Captains are going to be key contributors, specifically Braviary and uh, Appleton. I think Levani, it can set up sticky webs, and it's like decently fast, but I don't know if it'll ever be very great. Um, I, this team has the support, like Encore with Tinkaton or like Reflect maybe. This team has the support and like the hazards to make its main offensive threats shine. I think this team has like some type issues, like uh, fairy and ice types can be a bit problematic, and your resist is fortress. And I really, I, I, I haven't done this yet, so I'll guess I'll harp on a single mon here. I really don't like fortress as your only spinner and your mains. Luckily, it's not the only steal. Thank God Tinkaton's here. I don't love Tinkaton, but I do like Tinkaton way more than fortress. I think fortress has a lot of issues. Um, in trying to do too much at once and then it ends up doing very little it, at least in my uh, experience that's what i find it usually dies really fast it uh usually gets one hit ko'd by some fire coverage that some pokemon has um there's a large speed gap between garchomp and town flame it goes from like the 120s to the 102 so that's obviously not great i think this team might have some sustainability issues especially if like appleton isn't coming then really only town flame can survive long Braviary Hisui could be like defensive roost, which could be nice. This team does have like, I, I did say only a one rapid spinner because it does have two defoggers in Braviary Hisui and Talonflame. So it's not like its hazards control is completely out of, because those are both viable defoggers in my opinion. So it's not, its hazard control isn't like out of the world gone. But like its main offensive threats, this team, like Garchomp and Spectre, unfortunately have no like momentum moves to really get them like yeah. switched out which can be kind of unfortunate. And like a few of the walls don't really have like Appleton, who I think is key to this team and like Tinkaton, they don't have any momentum and either to Quillfish Hisui. So I think this team could be like in a momentum sink sometimes, uh, may need some double switch from orange, which I know, you know, he can pull off for sure. Uh, and I think this team's a little susceptible to like set up. Like I think this team can get set up on and then like if they get plus one speed, plus one, like it's a, a dragon dancer, it can really uh, lead to issues and like even like a swords dancer could be like pretty big and priority i think could also be an issue for this team yeah i think only having unless i'm mistaken i think tinkaton has fake out and samurai has two priority moves but there's nothing else on this team if you run uh, gal wings Quilfish. on town oh, if yeah, you run yeah. gal wings on town flame it can have brave bird and with the fortress point, you never realize how many things have fire punch until you have fortress on your team. And you have to go check and type in, is this thing a fire punch? And then everything always does. And you're like, wow. Um, I like this team a lot, just the top four guys. So um, as somebody who's played, you know, at, at heart, I'm an Ubers player. And that's the way I would play Spectre. If I had this guy on my team, I wouldn't be trying to beat the other team. I'd be trying to position them into the exact position I wanted and then throw Spectre at the, end, at the end and win. So the way I'm going to look at the team is, does he have what he needs to do that? And I think for the most part, he does. Yeah, he's got really great hands. Like I said, hands, really helps Spectre. Yeah, hands is going to, 
Hands is going to do something, and Hands has Volt Switch. So which, you know, why it has it, I guess just every electric type has it, but it, it can run that, and it will always do something. It's hard for ha Samurai Hasui to do nothing. Like, unless you just throw it at first, and they're Choice Scarf, and you don't know, it's almost always going to do something. And I want to see more offensive Garchomp. I feel like because for years on ladder, it's only been used defensively, that people only run Tank Chomp. And, like, the power level is so much lower here. I feel like we could just run, like, Choice Band Garchomp, like, Swords Dance Garchomp, like, Try it out sometimes because people are not used to seeing that anymore, and I I don't know why nobody does it. I think but... I think Orange really likes <laughs> offensive guard chomp, and I think it really has a chance here, and probably needs to be offensive uh, because you know everything else is setting up hazards anyways. You know he's got yeah. three three viable spikers here, three very viable spikers. So I think guard chomp can kind of pivot off of that role, and definitely go into like the sword stance scale shot role more, off, yeah. off, or like even like the Draco Fire Blast special set. You could do that yeah, too. I think I think that uh, Appleton is good. I like Terra Appleton. Um, I like Talonflame defensively. Like it, it's been years now. People have running the defensive Talonflame set, but every time I see it, I still can't believe it works as well as it does. It works, guys. Like defensive Talonflame works. It's a real thing. It's a good defogger. Does is it ca kind of counterintuitive with the team to have two defoggers when you're running spikes? A little bit, but you know. Yeah. In in my heart, I think that I really like Braviary also, but I think maybe they could combine that and Fortress into something. I don't know what's on the board. Like, I don't know. But just something else to generate more momentum or another spinner if it's available. Like, I don't know what it would be. But I wish there was another spinner that wasn't Fortress instead of two Defoggers, although I do like Talonflame. But I think the top four, and same thing, Tinkaton, I think Tinkaton always does something. Like it has enough utility moves and it can Thunder Wave and be really annoying and slow things down for Garchomp. Tinkaton as a status spreader, I think is its best role because it's just annoying to deal with. Like if they don't have the, it, but if it did have a switch move, it would be better. Like if they give, give Tinkaton Baton Pass, but um, yeah, I like this team really just on the back of Spectre. I feel like it's a higher power level than everything else we have now that we got rid of Chi and Pao and uh, Chi Yu and their lot. And I just believe that if it's played well and he has enough tools, you're always at an advantage when you have the best gun. I look at it in the basketball sense of if you have the best player, you have always a chance to win. And I just think this team, when he figures out the pieces and figures out how to play it, I agree there should be more switching on the team to keep bringing in Spectre over and over again. Same thing with Garchomp. We want to bring it in more than I feel like this team can. But it has enough talent to where... if I would be surprised if this team doesn't go to the finals. Like, bearing, barring some major hacks, or somebody just really outplays the coach, this team should, in theory, do it, in my opinion. You know, it's very, very strong, I agree. I, and I like Appleton a lot. I think uh, secretly Appleton might be the terror captain that comes the most. If I'm being yeah, honest definitely. About it. It, it has to. Yeah, it has to. I, I think That's Appleton might. Reason. It's like an eight-game season. I wouldn't be surprised if Appleton came to like five, five games. Four or five games. Four, oh, because five like games. Braviary, the the breaking power of Braviary, like I said, unless you're going to run a defensive set, you just don't need it. Like it just yeah. it's not needed. It's cool, and I like it. But yeah, it's, it's, cool. not, it's not it's not as necessary as Appleton's backbone is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just yeah. feel like as much as I like it in a vacuum, I just don't know that you need it. All right. And moving on to numero three. Okay. Here we have a very interesting team from the Vancouver Valiants. So I think this team has a very clear purpose, a very clear goal and I think that's something some teams lack, and I think that's very cool. So what this team does is it's got a few really strong setup uh, mons, or they don't even necessarily have to set up. It's got a few very strong mons like Volcarona, Kyurem, and Annihilate, who uh, can all either be strong off the bat or they can be you know really dangerous setup threats. It's got a really devastating screener, one of the best screeners in Grimmsnarl, who can also parting shot, so he has really viable uh, momentum. This whole team has very viable momentum, with like Volt Switch and U-Turn all over the place, and a Flip Turn, Vaporeon, and a parting shot, uh, Grimmsnarl. A lot of the key members have that. 
And then it also has really nice hazard stacking with Glamora, who's like, you know, hazard stack the Pokemon. And then a really nice blocker in Annihilate, who if you predict that he's going to come in on the spin and try and hit him, uh, you're just boosting him even further. Plus a very good rapid spinner in uh, Iron Treads. So I do really, really like... Uh, how this team looks in terms of like what the goal is you know lead glamora or grim snarl uh get up the hazards get up the screens uh whittle potentially with like your defensive pieces you've got vaporeon who's got recovery kill a can be like defensive roost if it needs to be grim snarl's defensive annihilate can be defensive with rest it's uh, one of its most viable sets uh, so the synergy in my opinion on this and uh momentum on this team is very very strong um, and each team has a really strong role, and I think this team can snowball to devastating effects for opponents. Uh, that does lead to some predictability. I think this team could be potentially predictable for opponents. Uh, there's a bit of a speed gap after Killowitch Rel. It goes all the way down to Jumpluff, who, uh, you know, I think Jumpluff's good. Like, I don't, I, I, I do like Jumpluff a lot, but, um, you know, it's, it's still Jumpluff. So, it's really Killowitch Rel to Treads, which is a pretty big speed gap. Uh... I think like War Deer and Jumpluff could have like trouble finding because all the other mods have such defined roles. War Deer and Jumpluff could have like trouble finding that role on this team. And the defensive pieces, um, like Grim Snarl, there is healing on this team. Like Kill Patrol has Roost. Uh, Bulgarona can be defensive and it runs Morning Sun when it does that. Uh, Vaporeon obviously has Witch and can Wish Pass around. But like Treads have healing. Anali has to run Rest. So like. It, it's, there's potential to be overwhelmed here, especially if Vaporeon isn't coming or is down. There could be like a lack of healing going on, which could make sustainability a bit of an issue. And I think initial power level, obviously Kyurem's very strong. Initial power level, like without the setup that this team is geared towards, to be fair, uh, could, and Volcarona is also very strong without setup, but it usually is setup. So initial power level without setup could be a bit of an issue for this team as well. Yeah, I think this one's really good. Uh, if I was really trying to win this season, I would have taken Kiram and Slowking Galar. I think Kiram is not that much worse than Baxcalibur, honestly. Like, people have come to think, like, it's budget Baxcalibur. It's not. The spec set is crazy. Just, you just need, you know, Ice Beam, uh, Freeze Dry, and Draco, and it's really good. Mixed set, substitute, like, it does all kinds of things. Um, Annihilate is also crazy. Why this thing is going in the third round now, I don't know. It's the best... You know, Golden Go it obviously just shuts down Defog and Rapid Spin, but Annihilate punishes you for Defog. Like, you Defog in front of Annihilate, you just lose. So it's the best hazard protection in the game, in my opinion. And then Glamora, you know, it should be good. But the thing I think with this team is this is the one we've seen the most that is most dependent on the player. You have to be skilled to use this team. There's nothing here that, uh, like, other than Kyrim, maybe, that you just throw out and just go oonga boonga button. So, if this is played well, this might be the best team, but I think it requires a lot of setup and figuring out. We have things here, like, I've never seen Volcarona, Volcarona might be my favorite Pokemon, but I've never seen it work in draft. I've never seen Glamora work and Grimstarl. Work is debatable because, like, it doesn't really kill things, but I've never really seen it dominate. So in theory, they should be good. Like, they should be good, but I have to kind of see it first. But like you said, the, the plan is clear, and I there's not really a great way to stop it other than immediate power. This team is going to have trouble, I think, dealing with, like, just throwing something out. Spec, Spec, Trier. And there's no weird ear here, and it just clicks Shadow Ball over and over again. Just... Just something that's really strong and just hits hard right away and doesn't let you get into your game plan. I think this team takes a couple of turns to get going, assuming it doesn't lead Grimmsnarl. And that's the only issue I can see. But in terms of the, the Pokemon on the team and the theory behind the team, this is definitely a championship team, depending on the play, I think. Yeah, I, I agree that, like, you know, Volcarona and Glamora, they have never really worked. They're kind of, like, predictable in what they're going to do. Although Volcarona can be, like, defensive, Flame Body, Morning Sun, Will-O-Wisp, that kind of thing. But, um, I, I, I think, like, Glamora, if it's ever going to work, with Annihilate is how it's going to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if it, it with should it, work. It, it, it should it's set, work. It's set up to be successful here, in my opinion. Uh, Treads is a really, really good spinner. So, obviously, uh, he's here. 
uh, to be like a glue piece more than anything. I don't think he needs to be like offensive very much. You've kind of got the offensive pieces pretty clearly lined out. It can be offensive. Treads can do a whole bunch of things, but I think as a glue piece is really what, where Tred, Tred ex excels in this team. I like Killer Wattrell. I think it's a good Terra Captain. It's, you know, just a pretty standard with what it does. Uh, I think Vaporeon is pretty key on this team. I think Vaporeon yeah. is really, really important for how this team wants to operate. The slow flip turns, getting the wishes to teammates potentially. Like getting a wish to Annihilate, Annihilate takes a hit and then just goes right back up to full and has the Rage Fist boost. That could be really, really yeah. nice. I and think then, Vaporeon's um, very good. I think Vaporeon is very good. But yeah, I agree this team has very, you know, it has potential to get overwhelmed. Uh, it could be dangerous if, like, someone tries to set up on this team. It, there could be, like, a lack of answers. I think Weirdeer uh, has, like, a really nice uh, role on this team. and helps with some, like, you know, uh, if there's a ghost issue on this team, Weirdeer can help out with that. Like, I think Weirdeer has the viability to come sometimes if, like, you're, you have a matchup issue. Because, like, with all of these 10 mons together, this team really doesn't have too many, uh, like, type weaknesses. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think that makes it so Weirdier or Jumpluff like are obviously very dependent, matchup dependent, but they have a chance of coming sometimes if like it really, really calls for it. And yeah. Weir Weirdier, I've seen some cool Weirdier sets, like Trick Room. Uh, this team's kind of weird because, like, like I said, like Kilowattrell to uh, Treads, that, that's not like super fast, but at the same time, you can't really run Trick Room because all the other guys are like above average speed like Kiram's not yeah. like you're going 95 like uh to 90 with annihilate to like 80 something to 86 with like lamora like all these guys aren't slow you know what i mean they're they're yeah. just like decently yeah, both fast. Is 100. yeah so all these guys there's nothing really slow here necessarily i think the average speed on this team is like in the freaking 90s yep all right and with that we're gonna move on to number two a team that i really really like that i think is probably the definition of like most well-rounded balance so this team is the golden state durants it is a uh, really like it's kind of strong it's kind of fat it's just the most balanced team in my opinion it's got all the types it needs to have. It resists a lot of types. I've looked at like the amalgamation of all the Pokemon together. I've looked at like the draft builder. It resists so many different types. It really doesn't have any weaknesses necessarily in terms of typings. Um, this team, its offensive output is good. It's not great. This team's like, like I said, it's like a really well-rounded all-arounder team. It's got a really great uh, Terror Captain in Rev of Room. It's got really nice momentum. It's got like U-turn and flip turn uh, on Latios and then uh, Greninja. It's got U-turn Corv. It's got parting shot, rubber room, volt switch, lantern, you know, that kind of thing. U-turn Rabombi. Uh, I think Oracorio Sensu probably gets U-turn too, because I know, uh, what's it yeah, called? Yeah, I think they Electric. all do. Electric. I think they yeah, all do. Electric. I think Sensu's a decent Terra Captain. I think rubber room's uh, probably the one that's going to come the most often. I think that one's really, really good. Um. So, I think this team, like, all the mons work well together, and, like, it's really hard to state the weaknesses here, because I don't think there are many. I just don't think the strengths are necessarily as strong as, like, the team, like, the, the, the team in three, the Vancouver Valiants, I think they have higher strengths and, uh, higher, and, like, more weaknesses as well. You know what I mean? Like, I think this team just works really well. I think it can be piloted, kind of easily like it kind of just has like a smooth road and the opponent needs to take advantage in some way in order to break this team down because i think if like everything goes standard this team should be able to just win um this team has really good setup options you know obviously latios can set up great tusk terra speed uh like bulk up i know how devastating that can be you can have uh like bulk up corvanite obviously shift gear on rev of room is really really devastating qd rabambi was near the top of the kill leaders uh and like a uh, sensu can also set up pretty well so the sustainability and hazard control here is good corvanite premier best defog or great tusk best rapid spinner so you're doing that really well only two uh stealth rockers so the output of hazards itself aren't good because you only have great tusk and you only have arcanine hisui 
Um, so the initial damage output and the initial hazards just aren't as uh, apparent as with other teams. And like Arbaliva on this team, without being a Terra Captain, I think like in Lantern, th Lantern and Arbaliva and uh, are like the two odd men out. I do like Lantern actually, but Arbaliva not being Terra means that it's uh, like not going to be super fantastic a lot of the time, in my opinion. Uh, this team used to have Iron Moth. I liked it better when it had Iron Moth, I think, so that's why that bullet point is there. Uh, but he did pick up uh, Arcanine Hisui just to get that second stealth rocker, so Tusk wasn't his only rocker, which I do understand. Uh, the team has like slight speed issues like it's not the fastest it doesn't have the, like the most high tier speed guys but it, the speed tiers themselves are fine i i, I just uh, don't think it's like out of this world amazing and then his priority output he doesn't have like a, a high level amount of priority but i i think this team just has like a lot right and not a lot wrong but it, it, it's not like grade a the best at any one thing yeah this is like the way better version of the Embors team that we talked about earlier, where there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just, there's no, there's not a superstar player on this team for me. Like there's not, there's a lot of things that can do and it's really good, but there's no like obvious win con here that can just come every week. So just to throw something out, like Great if there's no Arbo come every week, but yeah. Yeah, you know, no, there are things that will come every week, but I mean, like you can't just bring set up Great Tusk every week and be consistent against the top players. Or like, I just if this team no Arbaliva, right? Spectre just rolls the whole team, like on the face of it. Um, but it doesn't. It it's it's really really good. I just I don't know I. I really wish the R Believer was a Terra. I, I like Reververum. Reververum is one of these weird ones that, like, I feel like it should be better than it is, but the better the people you're playing against are, the worse Reververum is. And sometimes I feel like with a team like this, maybe it could use more support. Like, may maybe he's going to run Reververum and fake the sweeping set and use the parting shot more to get in the Latios to get off the big hits. I do like, like, like Toxic Spike's parting shot. Reverber. Yeah, I, I it, so yeah, he could do things with it. Um, like I don't want to come off like it's not good. I do, I do really like this team. I also liked it more with Iron Moth because I, I am a bit concerned that it doesn't have quite enough immediate offense. Like I really think you're needing to run Specs Latios here. Um, yeah, I mean, Arcanine Hisui is really strong, so that is, it is. Yeah. It, it yeah, is immediate yeah. offense. It's just I don't know how I feel about Arcanine. Like Arcanine Hisui has a bunch of quad weeks. It's not a Terra Captain. So I don't yeah. know how much I feel like comfortable. Like I, it wouldn't be a mon I would draft usually, just because I don't feel super comfortable bringing it out a lot. Yeah, in, in fear that, of coverage. So that's the only thing I would say about this team. Like I really like the top four guys, and I think Latios is way better in draft than it is on ladder right now because it it kind of goes back to being its old self where it can just spam Draco and Luster Purge and it just does what it needs to do. I think Latios is incredible in draft. If they don't bring their dark Luster Purge spam with choice specs, just destroys opponents. Yeah, pretty, that's pretty the thing crazy. is that I think, I think Latios on this team, just if you're trying to be optimal the majority of the time, is kind of locked into a spec set to just for the damage output. Because yeah. if you're not going to run offensive Tusk and you're not going to, and you're not going to bring our, like Arcane on Hisui, there's just not that much damage. Again, unless you're bringing Specs Greninja or Specs Latios, yeah, there's I mean, not Specs that much Greninja, I think Specs Greninja can come a lot of weeks. It's the most popular set for a reason. I yeah. Think. It's, it's really good. Greninja's yeah. just really, really good in draft in general. It's like a multi-ton champion at this point. It, uh, yeah, no, versatility. Yeah, Greninja's is definitely good. Yeah. So, like, I, I like this team a lot. This is a... This is a one like not as much like the Valiance team, but again, I think this one is is player dependent. So if one of the best people has this team, it'll do really well. But there's a lot of Pokemon on here that I've seen disappoint when they're not played optimally. Like you could play Tusk and it looks like it sucks, even though it doesn't. You know what I'm talking about? Like same thing with Latios or Reverum. If they're not played optimally and they're not prepped right for the week you can't just throw these guys out and they win because they're good does that make sense what i'm saying yeah i know what you mean i i've seen tusk played poorly for sure i think all these guys 
Except like Greninja, I think uh, Greninja always seems to get value, and like sometimes yeah. you stumble into a plus one boost battle bond and just sweep, even if you like, yeah. really don't know what you're doing. Yeah, but, but um, but this, this is definitely a championship contending team. Like if this if this guy's on point with it, this is definitely hard to beat. Yeah, which I, from what I understand, he is is yeah. what I'm understanding. So I yeah. have that trust that this team can be piloted well. Yeah. And I think Sensu, like Terra Sensu, could theoretically be good. It, could be like a dangerous sweeper yeah because yeah, it's got that revelation dance which is pretty yeah. cool the bulky any of the bulky oracorio setup sets are good they are good yep all right and with that we're moving on to our number one team you should all know it by now by process of elimination someone who sees themselves uh frequently near the top of these lists we've got the abbotsford agrons piloted by nightmare hall so this team I think has <clears throat> more obvious weaknesses than the previous team, the Durants, but just such higher, or like its strengths are so apparent. Dragapult, a support Dragapult or offensive Dragapult, I think it's uh, the best Mon in the format probably. It, it's just, its versatility is unmatched. It's so dangerous. It can be light screen, it can be, you know, status, it can be, you know, specs, or it could be Dragon Dance if it needs to be. I think Dragapult's, you know, getting it at fourth pick is really great. Quick Quabble is such a devastating sweeper in draft. It really, really punishes the ill-prepared. Um, and it can also be a rapid spinner, which is really, really nice. Uh, Clefable, uh, good on a Weremon, good Magic Guard Mon. It's just a fat fairy, which is really appreciated. Uh, I think Heatran in draft offensively is very underrated. And defensively, obviously, everyone knows that it's good. Hisui Electrode, everyone knows how good it is. Muckalola, you know, a really nice grounded poison, really fat, nice uh, coverage. Gliscor get, lets him get up all his hazards. He's got really nice hazards thanks to Gliscor. Cryogonal's another spinner. It's pretty fast. And I think Rhydon's a very underrated, very devastating uh, Terra with Lightning Rod and Terra Water. Uh, this team does have a few, like, weaknesses, like I said. Uh, massive speed drop between Dragapult and Cryogonal. This team is, like, deceptively... Uh, a fat team it's got like some really fast guys it, this is like bulky bu bulky balance bulky offense balance uh a bit of a hazard control problem because uh i had quick quibble last season and in my experience you really don't want quick quibble to have rapid spin on it quick quibble really wants its four move slots so if quick quibble doesn't have rapid spin then your cryogonal non-terra is your rapid spinner which is a bit of an issue but at least he had there's a lot of teams with ha uh, hazard issues and they don't even have the option this is like the option of Quick Quabble has to, oh no, Quick Quabble has to run app Rapid Spin, but at least it can, you know what I mean? At least it can run Rapid Spin. Uh, he has Thwacky, which actually helps with a ground weakness, you know, from Heatran and like Muck and like Rhydon Pre-Terra, so that's nice. Uh, and Thwacky can also give some like uh, healing with Grassy Terrain. Uh, grassy Terrain with Gliscor healing, you know, Gliscor is healing a whole bunch with uh, its Protects, so that could be nas ma massive. Big old ice weakness. I think I mentioned that uh, already. But yeah, this thing has a big old ice weakness. And Cryogonal and Thwacky not being Terra is uh, pretty pretty devastating. So because this team has an ice weakness and also a little bit of a fairy issue with like its core guys, I think Heatran is really, really important on this team. And, you know, if Heatran like dies or Heatran's low, you could be running into some issues. But, you know, it's our number one team. So let's get to like all the positives. Uh, the offensive firepower here with Heatran, with Quick Quabble, with Dragapult, you know, Electrode's coming for power to hit him. Rhydon's really, really strong. It, it, it's really huge, and everything's working well together. The fairy, the fairy Dragon Steel, it's really devastating. You know, this team's momentum, it's flip turning, it's U turning. Uh, it's got the Volt on Electrode. It's got like very premier options on all of those. Fly score can U turn. So it's got all, all those options going for it. Uh, it. It seems very versatile. It can have a multitude of team structures. You can really change who the hero is every week. One week it could be Quick Wobble. One week it could be Heatran, Dragapult. It could be freaking Rhydon one week or Gliscor if it really needs to be. And I think the two Terra Captains, I think this is like the best two Terra Captain uh, like tandem that we have. Like I think that, that, that Abbotsford has chosen the best Terra Captains in the league this season in Stargazer. Yeah, I agree that this is probably the best team. I want to point out Quick Quavel, I think, is crazy, and it should be more points. Like, this guy always does something, and it's hard not to bring it almost every week, because, like, why wouldn't you? Um, the fact you can get 
a dragon dance just by picking something off is so strong and it exerts so much pressure. And then Clefable invalidates so many strategies on the other team just by it existing on your team. Like, even if you don't bring it, just the fact you, you have all these Pokemon on your own team, you're like, oh, well, that loses to Unaware Clefable. I can't bring it. And then you bring it and then you lose to Unaware Clefable. Like, no, regardless, it works, right? Um, Muck Alola, I think, is great. And it's really important for this team, I think, because it's such a good special wall. And Stab Knockoff is so valuable in draft where... You know, people's items, sometimes the whole strategy revolves around something having its item. And the fact this thing with its bolt can just come in a bunch of times, the Thwacky could eliminate the ground weakness, get it its health back, it can run AV and still have recovery and just knock off some items, which makes the Gliscor work better. It can spread status randomly because of its poison touch ability, where we got Thunder Wave on Clefable, we got Flame Body on Heatran, then suddenly Specs Dragapult with Hex comes out and it's just wrecking you. Um, Rhydon, I think, is really good. Like, I agree. I think that you see this and you think, oh, it's going to be defensive Terra Water. It still has 130 attack. Like, this thing can rock polish and it could be weakness policy. It could be all kinds of crazy stuff. When it's Terra Water, it has one weakness to uh, to Grass, which you have Heatran on this team also. So Terra Water Rhydon and Spadef Heatran might be the most unbreakable defensive core I've ever heard of, like, when you really think about it in the grassy terrain, by the way. So, um, yeah, I think the speed issue is going to become an issue in a couple of games. I think he just hopes it's not an important game. But the fact, like, I'm not even considering Cryogonal a real guy, because, like, that's not going to come most weeks. So we're going straight from Dragapult to, like, Quaquable. Like, it's like a 40-point speed drop. And I agree with the strategy. I'll, I'll do it from time to time. One really fast guy, and then that's enough to just make sure they can't do any weird things with the speed tiers. But I do think at some point that'll be an issue. I think he's just hoping it doesn't matter in a game that is really important. But um, this this would definitely be the team that I think wins most. Like if this season is played 100 times, this team will probably win the most times, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's just, it, it's got the best blend of offensive prowess with support and like a good, you know, defensive bend, but don't break backbone. I think, uh, Gliscor going so late really helped this team. I think Gliscor is really key here. I like it a lot with these guys. Yeah. It's, it's surprising. Uh, a lot of the stuff is set up by, uh, you know, Gliscor can poison things, Muck can poison things, Heatran burns things, Clefable's throwing out Thunder Waves. And I think yeah. that substitute Hex set on Dragapult is going to be extremely viable on this team for that reason. There's a lot of status going around here, which wasn't something I realized. And I don't even know if Nightmare realized it when he drafted the team. But when I was really looking at it, I'm like, this whole team could end up status by the end of the game without him really even meaning to do it, like just by happenstance. And then that sub Will-O-Wisp set becomes even better. And then we're running Hex on physical D-Dance sub Dragapult. We got all kinds of crazy stuff going on on this team. Um, so he just has more options than everybody else. And the options are a little bit better even than the other teams like Durant that has a lot of options. Just also because he just has Dragapult. And like I said, he has a stu superstar guy with a million sets. And he just has a clean, a nice cleanup guy to where you have to survive Clefable. Quavo, Heatran, Electrode, Hisui, Gliscor, and then you got to be high enough to survive Dragapult just cleaning you up with Specs Shadow Ball at the end. Like, um, that's the difference between this team and the second place team, in my opinion, which is why I ended up with Abbotsford also number one on my list. All right. And with that, let's go over a quick recap on the next slide. So, with all that said, We've got Abbotsford Agrons, number one, Golden State Durants, number two, Vancouver Valiants, number three, Frederick Klefkies, number four, Luscious Lopunnies, number five, New York Malamars, number six, New Jersey Dracos, number seven, Charleston Chesnots, number eight, Sunnyside Screamtails, number nine, Norwalk Noiverns, number 10, M Meachin Embors, number 11, Pittsburgh Scizors, number 12, Philadelphia Flyons, number 13, and Clombrook Kyogres at number 14 for our post-draft Stargazer Division power rankings. Do we have a championship prediction? 
I'm gonna go... It's tough to say. I gotta root for my guy Vancouver, right? And I think his team's good enough to win the championship. I gotta go, Klefkies. This is your year, man. Spectre, bring it home. It's a choke job if you don't. You gotta win. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go Vancouver, or I, I think Golden State could do it. I, I like non-biased. I really like the Durant team. So if I had to lock in a non-biased take, I'd go Golden State Durant as my champion choice. Yeah, those are your picks, ladies and gentlemen. Set All in right. stone on day one of the season. Thank you for watching. That's just the last slide. Thank you for watching.